So uh, moving forward, we're going to talk about typical repair methods of broken strands. Um, I know there's a lot of, you know, misinformation or, or cloak and dagger stuff about uh, breaking strands and what do you do if they are and when they are broken. Uh, hopefully after this hour talk, it'll be relatively um, simple to fix them or at least add some uh, less stress in your life if these things happen. And they do happen. They happen on every one of my jobs. And actually, I added a slide this morning because I just got an RFI, uh, which you can see right here, which isn't the greatest actual texting or uh, fonts or graphics. But if you can look at the actual uh, body of the RFI we just got, uh, and this from the date, you can see um, on the upper middle, let's call it, right there. This happened today at 8 a.m. So, I mean, this happens all the time. And they broke one of the strands during stressing after going about uh, three inches of elongation. And it just, you know, it broke. My point in saying this is that it happens, I would say, all the time. I would say I deal with a broken strand once, twice a month. Uh, and for the most part, they're usually melt relatively simple uh, fixes. But again, uh, it happens in new construction, it happens after construction, and uh, usually the fixes are uh, similar for both conditions, but obviously new construction is a little easier to fix than old. But again, this happens you know, all the time. Uh, the couple of things about PT I'm going to go through real quickly are some of the myths, but a lot of it applies to the repair of slabs. One of it, PT is crack free, which is not true, waterproof, it reduces load, which is all not true. But the other thing is you can't drill into a PT floor system. There's a lot of engineers, developers, architects that, let's say for podium slabs or office buildings or something where there may be a lot of tenant improvements or, or client turnovers and stuff like that, do not use post tension because you can never drill into the system and it's just horrific. And that's just not true. We drill in the slabs all the time. Uh, yes, you probably just shouldn't go plowing through it with a uh, a coring hammer or a drill, but you probably shouldn't do that anyway in general. Uh, if you do hit a tenon, it will fly out of the building and kill a family of four on their way to church in a different state. Um, that's, again, not true. Tenons are hit you know, all the time, every day across the country with the prevalent use of post tensioning. Not that I recommend this, but I've stood on a deck where the tenons were purposely cut. You can feel it. There's a vibration. A lot of times the grout pocket that covers the stressing in will pop out or something. That's about it. Nothing magical, horrifical, or, you know, fantasies and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing is once you break a strand, it's so Herculean effort to replace it. Now, that was relatively true back in the day, meaning in the 80s and 90s. And I'll explain to you why that has gotten to be. Uh, almost a complete lie, the last thing that we're doing. But for the most part, if you're in 1997 and um, you broke a strand, that was a little more problematic, a little bit more, not horrific, but a little bit more. Nowadays, it's almost laughable how simple it actually is. 